Hey Randall, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription polarized, what color are they? They are the G15 lenses for a Ray-Ban. Look at this cute little box. You, there's only one frame that can be in here and that is the 4105 folding Wayfair color 601 and the 50 eye size and believe it or not Randall this came in in this a cute little case look at this thing look at this thing let me take it out of course your folding Wayfair your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and your Ray-Ban case let me put all that uh, down it came in in the shiny black so the person I spoke to on the phone at Ray-Ban who said this was a matte black of course they were just looking at the picture but you got what you wanted the classic shiny black the shiny black in the folding Wayfair this thing is so cool so cool and your doctor's office said they couldn't put a prescription in there well give me 15 minutes it's now 746 on Friday July 18th give me 15 minutes and by 8 o'clock we're gonna have your prescription in this frame so I'm gonna take your Italian frame and put it into my Italian Santa Nelly. This is the LE1000 Patternless Edger. So I'm gonna slow it down for you this time. I'm gonna open up the chuck. There are actually four pins, little pinchers. Two on the top, let me pull this down, two on the bottom. And I'm gonna put this into the frame. Now the chassis, that kind of holds it there loosely. Now when I hit this button, which is the trace, which is gonna trace both lenses um, one at a time. I can trace just the left or just the right, but I'm going to trace both by hitting that button. So the stylus is coming around. The pinchers have closed down, so now the frame is in there solid and cannot move. And the tracer is going to do the right side and then move over and trace the left. And this is in every video where I say, here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. Providing I slow it down so you can watch what's happening, that is. But, yeah, you buy a genuine, authentic Ray-Ban frame and receive free, clear, single-vision pr prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. But in your case, Randall, we are going to put your prescription in here. And all you paid, well, you paid $155 for the frame, and you only paid $60 to the upgrade to, pro to polarized lenses. So I have removed your original lenses, which takes a few minutes. So in order to save time, I've taken them out of your frame. These are the ones that came in there with the little G15 sticker. And let me hold one of your lenses up so you can see how close the color is. Let me turn that light back on so you can see. Hopefully you can see that how close that is. In fact, it's a dead-on match. So let me move. Woohoo! It's running away from me. You can't get away. You cannot get away. You're called the folding wayfair, not the running away wayfair. So. Let me get your right lens ready. Your prescription reads minus 275, minus 75 at 100. So I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 100. It's on here somewhere. I've only got 0 to 180, and I keep going round and round and round. So I'm going to set the power drum at minus 275. I'm going to put your lens in there and rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly. And now would be a good time for you to observe how dusty the top of my lensometer is. <laughs> Let me see if I can clean some of that off for you. Okay. We've got the sphere power lined up perfectly. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction. I'll explain all that in a little bit. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. Those three dots will give me a horizontal meridian to know exactly where to place this lens to block it up. Now that is so light I can't even see it. Let me get some more ink to put on my lensometer. And hopefully I can do all this in 17 minutes without the video being chopped in half. All right. Now, let me put your lens back in, get it lined up exactly where it should be. And I will put three dots on your lenses. Hang on, sorry, I'm just very particular. You want the guy who is a perfectionist cutting your lenses. Make sure everything is in there perfectly. Hopefully you can see those two dots where there's two of them there. Let me put a third one in. There we go. And that is the right lens. So I'm going to mark that right. I'm going to do the same thing for your left lens now. You have the same axis, which is 100. That is very rare. And I'll explain all that again later at the end of this video when it's been chopped off. I'll explain everything you need to know. No. Um, all right. Let's put some more dots on here. We're good to go. And for some reason the ink didn't take, so I'm going to put that one there. Now the reason why I put these dots on there is it gives me a straight line. Your lens cannot be 
have any other orientation in the frame or you're just not going to see as well. This block is what's going to hold it in place while it is cutting. So I need to put a double-sided adhesive sticker. And wouldn't you know, 3M, the same people who make post-it notes, make some double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side, so I'm going to stick that onto the block. Pull the tape away to make, whoa, make both sides sticky. Get everything lined up. And essentially what I'm doing is I have a crosshairs of a scope. I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal one, and I just want to make sure your lens is oriented just perfectly. That's what the three dots are going to do. So let's do that again with your left lens. Put the sticker on there, pull the tape away, get everything lined up perfectly, and we're good to go. So I'm going to put the right lens into the chuck, although you know what? I have not programmed your frame. So let me pull up the shape of your frame onto the computer. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance, which is 58. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle. Actually, I took it off the soft cycle just so it cuts a little bit slower and these are being cut for a plastic frame. So now we can hit start. So 58 polycarb soft for a plastic frame. Ooh, hang on. See all this top with the block and it showed me that I need to put a different block on there. I'm going to run over my time limit. I hope you don't mind watching two videos. So because of your pupillary distance, I want to put a smaller block on here. That is the left lens, so I'm going to set that back down. Let me pull that side off. Do I have to put new dots on here? I think I just might. Let's see, 100. Let me get everything back on there. My stickers got pulled off my red dots. Back in the same place. Let me darken that one. So, put that one on there. I may have to do that again for the right lens. Sorry, I'm not more prepared. I was focused on making sure I slowed down for the tracing and didn't pay attention to everything else. This is what I should have done from the beginning. It's been a long week. Make sure those dots are still there. They are. So let me put those on there. And once it's oriented just perfect, although hang on, I'm a perfectionist. Let me clean all those off. Start all over again. Minus 275. I get one chance to do it right, so if it's going to take two videos, then so be it. It's not the end of the world, as long as your lenses are cut perfect. That's the most important thing. And why can these ink not work? Where's the good ink when you need it? Let me make sure they're getting in. I think I need a new sponge to soak it up. It's just not getting it into my, on my tips. All right, all right. More ink. Let me work on the lensometer. Let me move some stuff around here. Let me jab it with the screwdriver. See if I can move that around where it's going to take. Let me see what I can do to work on this. You're going to get the full show today. The full show. Yes, it is red ink. That is not blood everywhere. Although I'm about to leave some blood if this thing doesn't work right. Okay, let me clean everything off. Put that back in there, the tip of my screwdriver. Where's that right lens? 275, we're still on 100. Make sure that the points, I have three tips that are making sure they're going down into the ink. But when I said I was gonna slow it down for you, I wasn't kidding. This is way too slow and boring. Okay, okay, I see enough there just to darken them. All right, let me get this lined up. Okay. Now let's put this in and hit start. So these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of your frame onto the lens to make sure that this lens is large enough. And as long as it's 69 millimeters, and this one is, it is going to cut out. So it's always going to start on the back surface, the rear surface closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move forward and trace the shape of the front side, or on the front side of the lens, the shape. On the convex side, 
all the while measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel. Your cutting wheel is down here on the bottom. That's going to grind away your polycarbonate material. This wheel in the center is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens. I will have to close the door in just a moment, but for now I just want you to see as your prescription lens touches down onto the cutting wheel. I think it's going to be a little after 8 now. Yeah, look, it's already 7.56. Boy, did I blow that. Hope you don't mind the two videos. So your lenses are made out of the original lenses that came in here are the heavy glass lenses that if you would drop it, they would shatter on the ground or if you were accidentally hit in the face with anything, this lens would crack and slice your eye wide open. These are the unbreakable lenses. In fact, they are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays will do to your skin from overexposure where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. This is going to look great. This is going to look great. It's also an aspheric lens, meaning that it's much flatter. It's going to give you a nice finished cosmetic appearance. That's loud. Maybe not for you, but it is for me. So hopefully you can see through the door. Let me see if I can clean this a little bit better. I can't resist pulling that off. That is called Schwartz. If you notice, there is water running in the background, but polycarbonate cuts dry. In case I got any water on the lens, let me wipe that off. By the way, I will be sending you one of my own cleaning cloths as well as the Ray-Ban one that you'll be receiving. I will also be including instructions on how to care for your, not just your Ray-Ban frames and lenses, but for your Italian leather Ray-Ban case and your cleaning cloth so it will last you for years. So if you notice, this is where your lens is still flat all the way around and now it's getting the bevel put onto the lens. I love picking this stuff off. The last 20 seconds, some water jets will kick in to try and wash that away. If I don't pick it off first. There we go, we're in the last 20 seconds now. Once this is done, I'm going to take it out and dry it off. Put a safety bevel on there and then we're going to make sure and see if it fits first time around. A lot of times with the right lens, I have to take a little bit more off. I always start a little bit large and I work my way down to the correct size because you can always cut more off of a lens, you can never add it back on. The golden rule when it comes to edging lenses. Okay. Pull that out, dry this off. Now, you still have a little bit of sharp edges here, so I'm going to use my hand stone to smooth all of that out. And as you have seen me do, I remove all of that off of your lens using my thumbnail. I scrape this off, and I do this so much I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail. You've got to have the right tool for the job, and that tool is my thumbnail. And once it's all off of your lens, and onto the counter, I collect it into one pile, and then I wipe it on the floor. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I have to enjoy myself. I gotta have fun while I'm doing this. So to see if it fits, I'm gonna tuck your lens in at the outside corner, then using my thumbs, I press down, and there's still a little bit of give, so I wanna take it down a little bit more. 
So I'm actually going to take it down a quarter of a millimeter going all the way around. And a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take 75% of that difference off. So back to the bevel wheel, it's going to skip the cutting wheel, which is on the left, and go straight for the bevel. I actually want to use this opportunity when this one comes out as a teaching moment to show you how you can always check to make sure the lenses are polarized. Randall, I apologize. I did not even check to see what part of the country you live in. I guess I could do it really quick, but now nah, I'll stay here and watch this. You don't want to see me run to the computer. All right, the water jets have kicked in, so we're in the last 20 seconds. Okay, now that it's done, let's take it out and we will try again. Don't worry, that is not blood, that's ink from <laughs> where I was trying to put more ink in the lensometer. So real quick, back to the handstone, smooth off those rough edges, scrape that off. This time I'm going to eliminate the middleman, which is the counter. I'm just going to drop it right onto the floor this time. Alright, so to see if this fits, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and push down with my thumbs and it actually snaps in perfectly this time. So let me go ahead and we'll start cutting the left lens. Oh, my teaching moment. Actually, let me take this block off. That is no longer needed. Where's my tool? There it is. I'm going to pull this off. Actually, I better leave that there for... I'm going to need it in a minute. But... You hear the term polar opposites. The way you can test to see if lenses are polarized when you pass